Happy Tuesday, everybody. Uh, I think we're gonna do another uh, day of Holy Week devotions here. Um, at the very least, this can uh, help us all keep on track of what day of the week it is so we don't forget uh, about the big day coming up Easter Sunday. I've heard many pastors say it's like the Super Bowl Sunday of the church, um, which is weird, right? I understand I can be a little boring, uh, as evident that 90% of you fell off after about four minutes yesterday. So I'll try and keep this one quicker. Um, also hoping that a few more people will be willing to share what these texts are saying to them uh, in the comments so I can learn more uh, about your opinions and perspectives and experiences. It's kind of what makes this, uh, this whole thing fun. So the devotions for Tuesday of Holy Week are to read Psalms chapter 71, 1 through 14, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 31, and Mark 12. And in the interest of keeping this short, I'll just jump right in. Uh, still having a good time with these Psalms, and uh, they still kind of crack me up. If anyone can recommend a good book on, uh, to help me learn more about uh, Psalms, that'd be great, because I totally don't get it. Um, I get it. I don't understand the point, but I get the sentiment, if you know what I mean. Uh, let my accuser be put to shame and consumed. Let those who seek to hurt me be covered with scorn and disgrace. But I will hope continually and will praise you yet more and more. I don't know. That's the last, that's uh, verse 13 and 14. And I kind of enjoyed how the the juxtaposition between the two. Um, they, they don't necessarily seem to go together, but they do. And obviously I'm taking it out of context, but anyways, yeah, I'd love, uh, I'd love it if someone recommended a book so I could get uh, a better understanding of Psalms. The part that really jumped out to me of the three texts that we read today was the beginning of 1 Corinthians, where it says, for the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Um, in the past, I've always struggled a bit with Easter and Holy Week um, and probably have found it to be a bit foolish. Uh, personally, I, I always struggle with the idea that uh, we're God's creation, and uh, but the creation wasn't that good. We turned out to be not that great. And so uh, kind, of, kind of bad people and so God sent his son who had to pay the ultimate price for us to be forgiven. Um, and if that isn't strange enough, that, that always kind of was like, well, I struggle with that because it's like, why didn't God just do a better job in the first place uh, with his creation? Just put that aside, you know, the whole idea is that Jesus is crucified, dies, and then three days later is, is raised from the dead. He's, he's born again, and, uh, and then all this stuff happens because of that. Uh, I don't know, it's always sounded kind of, seemed kind of silly to me. And I think that that message of foolishness continued to speak to me or jump out to me through uh, Mark chapter 12, when we've got all these uh, real fancy uh, words for uh, religious people and leaders and whatnot, Pharisees and Herodians or whatever, <laughs> Sadducees, I don't know. I'm butchering these names, it is what it is. But they're all coming at Jesus and they're trying to trip him up and catch him and get him to say the wrong thing and foolishness, I guess, to me. And it keeps happening and they keep trying to get Jesus on it and like, okay, so let's say you've got seven apples and uh, three pigs, I don't know. But it all kind of comes together for me at the end where Jesus calls his disciples over and he's sitting by the treasury and the rich people have been coming in and, you know, throwing their, their wads of cash in, lots of money, you know, and kind of making a show of it. And uh, the poor uh, person comes and, and gives only a couple of pieces of copper worth a penny or something. And then Jesus points out to his disciples that, that those guys had given out of their abundance, but the poor person had given more because she had given everything, all she had to live on. And I think that's kind of, uh, 
the simplicity of it all. And, and, and that's such a beautiful message to me after all this, this complicated, legalistic nonsense that everybody was trying to, to catch Jesus on. And uh, that's, that's kind of how it ends. And that, that speaks something to me. And I think that's also what kind of has brought me around on uh, Holy Week and Easter and wanting to uh, uh, participate in these devotions with you all is uh, I guess I've kind of decided to give up on the, the uh, foolishness of the story, if you will, and focus uh, on the miracle and the message of it all, which is in the end, love wins. And that's beautiful. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Happy Tuesday.